North Carolina, 5-0-5 in conference play this season. Hit 6-3 and 1 as the five seed. North Carolina, the four seed. Let's love the game from Dorrance Field in Chapel Hill. We are into the postseason. This is what it is all about, what they all play for as this first round of the Ally ACC Women's Soccer Championship continues. Panthers taking the throw. Up, 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 up. Goes out of reach and Macy Bell, you can see she's got that brace on the left knee, will take the throw in for North Carolina. Amanda West, the all-time leading goal scorer for the Panthers, wearing number nine in blue, doesn't have it for long. Moxley. Her job is to own this sideline for North Carolina. Goes all the way to the goalkeeper, Ellie Breach. Sam Meza. She's fantastic on the ball when she's there for North Carolina. Number 10 in white, Allie Sentnor. I mean, it is just weapon after weapon, Lori, as you go down the <laughs> roster for these two teams in the attack and in the midfield. Yeah, it certainly is, but the midfield is going to be the key area tonight. Who can win that battle, especially we can already see in just these opening moments how many players are going to be in that central area. So utilizing the width for both teams is going to be so important. Mertz, West, the two wingers for Pitt, and then Patterson, Moxley on the other side for North Carolina. Can they get all the way to the touchline, provide an outlet, and then be able to take on 1v1 and create a little bit more variety in the way that both of these teams want to attack because the pressure is going to come fast and furious as we're already seeing here and that one's just dispossessed and North Carolina now able to regain some possession. Emerson Elgin will be back three along with Savvy King, the sensational freshman in the middle and Macy Bell, the All-American in defense for the Tar Heels. Deborah Avioden goes down on the play. She stays down, but Landy Mertz, such a threat. If she can get around this corner, the two number six is battling on this near side of the field. Mertz and Elgin. Mertz gets the ball into the area. And it's really positive play so far from, from Pitt coming in, being aggressive away from home. And, and that is something that we knew that they were going to need to do. Not be scared to play North Carolina, take their chances. They just need to make sure that they don't, this game doesn't turn into a transitional game throughout the match. At times, Abiodon, who just completed that pass, can she slow things down centrally? Shapansky as well. Can they run the show in those central areas for Pitt? Because North Carolina is going to press, and then they're going to slow things down as well, move it around their back line, but have loads of confidence themselves here at home to be able to dictate the tempo. ACC, the only conference in the country with two unbeaten teams at the conclusion of the regular season, Florida State and North Carolina, those two teams in the latest rankings, number one and number three. Anson Dorrance, no stranger to seeing his team highly ranked, and he had so much respect. I'm talking about Randy Waldrum and what he has done for the Pitt team since taking charge as Randy's sixth season in charge of the Panthers. Patterson can't get onto the ball, but this pit team, and you talked about the confidence, you know North Carolina is going to come out with. Well, this pit team is playing with more Boy, confidence. After last season was a record setting year, they have followed that up this year. Again, set their record for ACC wins with six on the season. And 49 goals coming in. Not a bad number for the Pitt Panthers. And they now believe they can play with the likes of the North Carolinas when they're on their home field. Well, that's exactly what Randy Waldrum had mentioned to us and even pointed to the Florida State game, Clemson game, even though that they lost both of those, that there was significant minutes, at least a half in each of those games, that they felt like they had the better control, especially in that midfield area. So if they can gain that type of control in this game early on through Abiodon, Shapansky that we mentioned, even Caulfield, 
as well, then they have a real shot to be able to get players forward into the attack. This is one of them. Yeah, Samaya Fury off the touch from the toe. Chapansky back to Fury. Here's Chapansky. And Fury does manage to get a shot off, but not on target. You can see her frustration. Well, there'd be frustration because she knows that she can score from that area, and that was a golden opportunity. Just the patience that we're seeing. There is a real variety in the way that this pit team can attack, that they can score goals. They played into Fury. She can hold up play, and then they find those wide channels. And with both of these teams playing almost an identical formation, once again, the space is going to be out wide, in particular when they do attack. So if they can keep those wide areas free, Mertz, West in particular going forward for for Pitt. They have some opportunity to get on the end of them with the service into the box. Touch out for Amanda West. Eight goals, eight assists on the season. Abby Oden, the freshman. Can't quite sneak it into the corner as Emmy Allen goes down for it. Well, it's not a bad idea. And now you see the amount of players that can get into the attack for Pitt. This is Abiota on one or four of your deeper lying midfielders that will want to get on the ball, dictate the tempo, but she can also join in to, to try to shoot from distance. Not a bad opportunity. Going to be an easy save in the end from Allen, but good pressure already in these opening minutes from Pitt. And then you talk about the width. You can see Moxley for North Carolina almost had her heels on the sideline out there. Wound up putting a little too much on the ball as it goes over the back line and into the gloves of Ellie Breach. But Moxley, such good fitness ability. Anton Dorrance telling us to be able to own that entire sideline. <laughs> I'm not sure if she wants to be doing that, but that will be the recall a little bit on the right versus the left side for North Carolina. On the right side, Moxley getting up and down, as you mentioned. And then on the left side, Patterson will most likely stay a bit higher, allowing Elgin behind her to be able to cover most of that, the defensive responsibilities. And at times, we'll see Patterson potentially cheat or even cut inside to create a bit more versatility in their attack. Patterson crossing over to the far side now. We'll get it back. Away! Patterson Away, puts it in a box, and Nor couldn't find the connection. Chloe, hold, Chloe, hold. And really good energy, Jen, to this game already in the opening minutes. Both teams wanting to get players line, forward. Up, overload up, in those up, wide up. areas. And Away! Continue to attack, right? I mean, it yes. is. <laughs> it's pretty open to start, which maybe is not a surprise. No, I don't think so, especially when it's postseason play, and that is what both of these teams want to do. We spoke with both of the coaches. They reiterated they want to score more goals. And I was just going to make the point before North Carolina is starting to tack into their 18-yard boxes that we will see a little bit of an adjustment defensively out of possession for Pitt. At times, the midfield, Caulfield, will drop into the back line, making it a back four for the Pitt Panthers just to give them a bit more coverage defensively. We'll see what type of space that opens up for North Carolina when they do attack. Macy Bell. As I mentioned earlier, a little bit in and out of the lineup this season for Macy, but an All-American a couple of seasons ago after she was hurt in the first match of the 2022 season, one that saw the North Carolina Tar Heels make it to the championship game of this ACC tournament also to the championship game, the NCAA tournament. We have shortened both of those championship matches. Emily Colton, a little bit deeper on the field for North Carolina in this particular formation. Reading the pass, takes it away for Pitt, but gives it right back. Here come the Tar Heels. Look at the strides from Ali Sentinor just leaving defenders in her way. You know she can strike it from distance. Has her shot blocked. Well, this will be the 
the challenge, Jen, just looking back at that last attack from Sintnor. One thing on her mind, go to goal, but can they slow things down at times, allow for more runners to develop, and really put that back line for Pitt under some pressure? If they just go at one pace, that is where the, the lack of being able to have that finishing touch has let them down so far this season. You're gonna see Pitt try to get into a, a bit of a transitional moment quickly into the attack right now. Pitt can do this, but North Carolina can do that. Sammy King has been absolutely incredible all season long. Rarely leaves the field for this North Carolina team. You know, it's a good matchup, and King has been immense for North Carolina as a young player coming in owning that starting back and you mentioned bell in and out of the lineup so she really has been the mainstay the leader on the back line goes to ground really well and sends this one out for the corner kick for pitt but if there is an area of vulnerability for this north carolina defense that has been so good it may be set pieces here's an early one for the panthers Shapansky from the corner and that's a good sign too emmy allen showing some bravery coming out punching it away although now she's going to have to defend one from the other side well, it's exactly what you want from your goalkeeper, though. Commanding the six-yard box, coming out, making herself known vocally. Gets a big fist to it, sends that one out. And now they have to regroup, make sure they're touch tight defensively, North Carolina. The Panthers, number one, not only in the ACC, but in the country in corner kicks per game. Shapansky. That delivery is nice, but it skims out of bounds, untouched. Well, the ACC Fall Championships continue this week. We've got field hockey quarterfinals starting on Tuesday and then the semifinals coming up Wednesday afternoon. Men's soccer first round matches will follow field hockey at 6 and 8 Eastern on Wednesday. All right here on ACCN and the ESPN app, the home of ACC Championships. Pitt Panthers have never beaten North Carolina. This is the eighth meeting all time between these two programs. North Carolina 7-0-0. They've outscored Pitt 17-2, including 4-0 in their last meeting here in the regular season last October. But all season long, Lori, this Pitt team has continued to look dangerous. Sometimes your numbers can be a little bit inflated. They've got great offensive numbers. They've dipped a little bit since coming into conference play, but they are still a team that creates really good chances every match they've been in. Well, and they work hard defensively as a unit as well. As you see, they got bypass Meza in a really good position to get on the half turn to spring this attack. And, and now we're gonna see a, an unnecessary foul from Minas, right outside the 18-yard box. We can set up for a dangerous opportunity for North Carolina, but it all starts from Meza, just getting beyond three, three. that midfield line of Pitt and then be able to get on the half turn, springs this attack and allows for the runs to develop. And as we mentioned, Minas just unnecessarily drawing that foul and one of the better opportunities we're gonna see here for North Carolina from a free kick. I'd say Tori Della Pruta made the most of it and earns this opportunity for North Carolina. It's a good one. Will this be the first real test for Ellie Breach in goal tonight? You'd assume Moxley can go right at her. Lofts it up. Easy in the end for Breach. And for both teams, the service off of set pieces is going to be crucial because they have the ability to be dangerous getting on the end of it. Targets. You have Fury on one side. Bell is another for North Carolina that can get on the end of it will certainly be the target. So can they make it the most out of it? But the service has to be better. Whipped in with some pace. Not allow it to be such an easy grab for the goalkeepers. You know, just going back to your, your previous point, Jen, about the variety of ways that Pitt can attack and their ability 
to go at speed, but also keep possession. But it also starts with their organization defensively, and that's going to have to be a key throughout this entire match because we already are seeing them step up a bit defensively, higher pressure, especially as North Carolina is trying to build out deep in their own half. So just make sure that they stay tight between their lines. Don't get caught out because Meza is a player that we've already seen be able to roam, find the game, and, and she can hurt teams when she finds a little bit of space in beyond that midfield line of the opposition. Yeah, as much as we like to talk about the offense for both of these teams, you do get the feeling that with the quality and the variety of attacking players that both teams possess, it could really come down to who executes better defensively. Meza, look at the numbers around her here, just forcing her out of bounds. Meza, an All-American last season, first team All-ACC 2022. She's been All-ACC every year, and this is her senior year that she's been at North Carolina. A little quieter from the goal scoring side this year, but that's not really been what's asked of her. And I think if those moments when she gets on the ball, if she can release a little bit faster, look for the combination play, she can find herself in even more dangerous positions because she picks up some really good spots in that midfield area. Mertz cut it right back into trouble. Now she gets a little bit of help as Zalski came up from the back line. Katie Zalski scored her first goal of the season at Florida State, that match you mentioned earlier for the Pitt Panthers. They went to Florida State October 19th, wound up losing that one three to two, though they took the lead over the Seminoles in that game. And I think it's quite fitting that the way the bracket lays out with Florida State getting the winner of this match in the semifinals, I think Florida State would tell you that these two teams probably gave them two of the most difficult matches they had all season long. Yep, absolutely. And it goes back to the point that you were making and how dangerous they can be in the attack. But there's also the variety of ways that they can threaten the opposition in, in transition being one of them, but then also patience, methodical, moving it around in possession and matches up really well with Florida State and their ability to attack as well. Florida State, the only team to score more goals overall on the season amongst ACC teams than Pitt. They had 50, Pitt with 49. In ACC play, Seminoles had 36, followed by Notre Dame with 24, Pitt with 23. Fury. She's got King on her back. She manages to stay with the ball. Samaya so Fury touches it over. Shapansky puts it out of bounds. Well, that entire attack starts from Mertz, creating the width on the far side, and then Abby Oden with the recognition to be able to spring her out, and then loads of space. We're going to continue to talk about the wide areas and how dangerous, because then it opens up the central areas, and we're seeing Fury start to get on the ball, Shapansky as well, and this battle between Fury and King for North Carolina is going to be a fun one all night because both players getting touch tight, showing their strengths against one another, and what a fun individual matchup we have on our hands. Yeah, I'm going to look forward to watching that one as this <laughs> match progresses. It's already giving you some good indicators of how important it's going to be. Well read, Minas had it but couldn't keep it. Abby Odin played for Randy Waldrum with Nigeria at the World Cup this summer. Gets it up to Fury. And where does she go, Lori? Out wide for West. Amanda West cutting in now edge of the area. Chapansky looked to spin it to the other side. Yep, and the, and the challenge for both of these teams is going to be just to be a bit more patient in the final third, the decision-making. Can they hold on to it for one more pass just to allow for the runners, the ideas to develop 
from their teammates because it's just a force. That entire attack for Pitt starts with a turnover on the other end for North Carolina, and then they have numbers going forward for Pitt. But the same thing, just a bit too rush on the other end for Pitt, and then it's the easy giveaway, and now we're seeing Allen with a, a goal kick. Three players go down fighting for that ball in the air. It's a foul whistled in the end on Pitt, so North Carolina will take the free kick. Oops. <laughs> Our referee, Ashley Cedro, <laughs> give them another opportunity. Couldn't quite she get tried to get in on the action, too. <laughs> Talia Del Pruta, both Del Pruta sisters in the starting 11 for North Carolina. Talia number 24 in the midfield. Tori number nine, that lone striker in this formation. Moxley had a couple of options. It's touched out wide by Della Peruta. A missed touch, a gift in the box for Patterson, but Zalski helps recover. Follow up shot, too high. Pit fortunate, aren't they, to get out of that without one in the back of the net. Well, this is one of the reasons why you want to get the ball out wide as well, because it's so difficult to defend when you play those balls into the box with pace, with spin on it. There's Caulfield that we talked about, will drop into the back line. She's completely free, but it's just a misplaced touch and almost lands and gives North Carolina a gift right in front of the goal. Fortunately, they have numbers back. Couldn't make anything out of it, North Carolina, but one of the better opportunities and credit to North Carolina to now starting to utilize those wide areas and, and whip balls in where they can be even more dangerous in the attack. Samaya Fury and that pit attack looking to become dangerous in this end of the field. They'll get a set piece here to try to do so. There's a ball into the box, a good one. Asking questions of the defense. Abby Allen, what a save! Abby Allen punches it away. Well, postseason play, it's all about coming up with one big save at least for goalkeepers. And Emmy Allen does such a good job. She gets herself set and then reads it the entire way. Big push and a big hand to see that over the end line. But that is a huge save early on because Pitt Panthers had a number of players to be able to get on the end of it. Here comes the corner, wide open. Ellie Caulfield, another chance in the box. Two golden opportunities right there for the Panthers. On a bit of warning signs, right, Jen? Because they don't want to be giving up some of these set pieces with how dangerous Pitt can be. The first one, a big ball, and then the corner kick off of the Emily, Emily Allen save. You can see a bit of a, a misclearance, but get fortunate that they draw that foul inside their own 18-yard box. going to relieve some of the pressure defensively. Savvy King and Macy Bell passing it back and forth. No rush here by the Tar Heels and no immediate pressure from the Panthers. really well done defensively from Pitt because they're patient. They just wait to gain some territory, force it back to Allen, and they regain off of the big ball from the goalkeeper for North Carolina. And now they have numbers and advanced positions. Unfortunate ball there from Abby Odon trying to go wide, just a bit too heavy, but really great patience from the Panthers away from home, not to pounce and not to bite and allow for that space to open up behind them for Bell or King to be able to play in behind. 
this is just the sub to get you warmed up for the North Carolina subs. <laughs> Bella Sember coming <laughs> on for Della Peruta in the midfield. If you know North Carolina, you know they sub in waves, and typically we will see that closer to the 15-minute mark of the first half. But for now, just the one. Well, and also to get you warmed up, Jen, for all yes. the subs that come on. That's really what I like. <laughs> Ashley said Rose going to have her hands full. We've seen some fouls right around midfield by both teams. Well, it's good work from Della Peruta, Tori Della Peruta higher up. Just to drop off that back line for Pitt and try to be an outlet. Panthers again from the set piece. Winds up well out of bounds. We'll have a special final hour of ACC PM tomorrow at 6 Eastern with Cal, Stanford, and SMU joining the conference next year. What's it going to look like? We all want to know. Mark Packer and Taylor Tannebaum will look at the ACC's new football scheduling model and the matchups for the next few seasons. Also very curious what that's going to look like for our women's soccer schedule in particular. Excellent programs in Stanford. Very familiar with the Cardinal and what they can do. Now they're going to be a conference foe. Well, we talked about those fine margins already, Jen. And oh, boy. <laughs> they're getting even smaller. <laughs> that they are. This match still scoreless between these two teams. The Panthers actually out shooting the Tar Heels so far, 5-2. But for Pitt, you, know, you mentioned their defense, how tough they've been to break down. They haven't allowed a first half goal in the last eight matches. North Carolina looking for a way to break through. Tar Heels coming off a draw on the road at Boston College in their regular season finale on Thursday. West with some room to move. Amanda West. Tiptoeing toward the penalty spot. It falls back to Fury. Deflects a couple of times. Pinball wizard for the Tar Heels, but eventually it does get booted to safety. Well, and, and right now, North Carolina doesn't really have an answer for Fury because she's doing such a good job of playing back to goal, being that initial outlet as soon as they do win it in those central areas. And then it's her first touch that sets her up for success. And then she allows others to join in. And from a pit perspective right now, you're extremely happy if you're Randy Waldrum. You have control behind the ball defensively when you're out of possession. You're patient. You have different ways you're attacking when you are in possession as well. A lot of respect between these two programs, between these two coaches. Anson, when we spoke with him this morning, just had so many good things to say about Randy and what he has done. Big ball over the top. Abby Odin will take me right into where I was going with that because she played in the World Cup this summer for Randy Waldron. But let's pause a moment, Lori, and look at this chance. Well, from a North Carolina perspective, this is just way too easy. And you can see immediately Macy Bell on the middle of your screen looking at her wide player saying, how is this player of her caliber able to get into the 18-yard box completely unmarked. And I'm just not so sure that Abby Odon knew how much time and space she had. Could have actually brought that one down inside the 18-yard box. He said that one goes nowhere near the goal. We'll want to do better with her caliber of play. But really another good attack for the Pitt Panthers. Yeah. And as you said earlier, really a warning sign for North Carolina. Fortunate that Abby Odin didn't do better with that ball. Should have. And they haven't been able to get a hold of this game. I mean, look how deep right now Meza is in the block of eight for the Pitt Panthers behind the ball. And so they'll ha they're happy with North Carolina just passing it around their back three and allowing them to keep possession in those areas. It's not dangerous, and they don't have enough movement, North Carolina, in the midfield for them to be able to break down that initial pressure from Pitt. So the movement has to come earlier. The angles ha of support have to be better for North Carolina for them to start to build in the attack if they are going to build in those deep areas right off of goal kicks or, or the short play once they do win it deep in their own half. Well, you know what might help change that for? Yep. Fresh Six legs, up. Jen. That's right. Here is the line change for North Carolina. 
great to see number 20, Olivia Thomas, the freshman from Michigan, back out there for the Tar Heels. She returned in the last game at Boston College. That was her first appearance since September 10th. That's the only ACC game she played in. So she's just really getting her feet wet again after a long stretch out with injury. Six subs in total, as I said, just came on. That is most of the midfield and front line that gets changed for North Carolina. Let's see if it changes the flow of the game, because I think you're exactly right, Lori. Pitt has had the better of it here as this first half has gone on. And we'll have to see how this second line for North Carolina lines up. I imagine they're going to go with a two front, stick with a three back. But how does that change the flow in terms of pressure, playing bigger balls over the top if you're North Carolina with two front runners? That would be Cox and Thomas, Isabel Cox and Thomas, the two up top for North Carolina. You've got some speed all across that front line. That was one of them, Maddie Darlene, and it was stepped in, taken away. Here comes Mertz. Darlene got the start in the last match for North Carolina with Patterson getting the rest on Thursday. Season high in minutes played for the number five. And this is what the Pitt Panthers are doing so well, is because as soon as Caulfield drops into the back line, you have the, the four backs, but then it allows for one player to release. And we just saw Zalski step off the back line so well, disrupt play, and then once again, just doing such a good job of being patient, and now they've won possession, and then they're showing their movement, the understanding, and the decision-making for Pitt Panthers once they do win it. Fury loses this one out of bounds. One change for Pitt. Kira Mellenhorst came on in the midfield in place of Chloe Minas. Melina Rabimbas is out there. Mia Oliaro, number 22, had the ball for a moment. Tessa Delarose. On the far side, Kate Fossey. One of those wingers in the attack for North Carolina. And I think that's every. Just double checking to make sure. <laughs> Calling out all those substitutions for North Carolina. But it can change how they look. As you said, sometimes it even changes the shape that they will play in. And I think there's opportunities for this North Carolina team right now to take a few more risks. Can you connect your first pass to be able to bypass the pressure for Pitt? But then also, can you just play one big ball over the top? See how Pitt deals with those balls in behind and then running at their, their own goal. We haven't seen that yet throughout this game. And one of the reasons why we see Anson Dorrance, the head coach for North Carolina, make so many changes is to bring on the fresh legs. So push the pace. Look to see if you can be more direct because right now, it is Pitt that is winning the midfield battle and then the regaining possession. And the only thing that's missing for the Pitt Panthers right now is that finishing product, which we talked about coming into this game. Being more composed, taking your chances once you do get them. Here is Delarose, full head of steam, comes charging out like a locomotive out of the back line. Thomas skips underneath her foot. Right, Katie, right, Katie, right, Katie. No Evelyn Shores, by the way. That is one big loss that the Tar Heels have suffered. She's out for the remainder of this season. She's really good in the midfield. Speaking of good, Cox keeping it on her feet from Rabimbus, excuse me. Melina Rabimbus. Thomas now with her left forces the save out of reach. Well, this is the energy that we're used to seeing from the North Carolina Tar Heels, getting numbers, winning it back immediately as soon as the ball is turned over, and putting the opposition under pressure and driving them back into their own 18-yard box. And Thomas really led that one. Difficult with the first touch because she cut down her own angle. And it was going to be an easy save in the end for Breach, but that is better from North Carolina. They need to continue to push this pace, be a bit more ruthless in the attack. Some of those subs making a difference. It had been quite some time. The last shot prior to that one for North Carolina had come in the 21st minute.
Panthers already have three players with two or more shots. North Carolina now just picked up their third shot as a team. And yet, scoreboard still says zero, so this match still belonging to anyone. Pitt Panthers looking for their first ever ACC championship win. Fury with the left. Overcooked the ball, and out it goes. Well, Saturday, the ACC huddle crew, you know they've got you covered all day long. They'll be in Raleigh, North Carolina. They'll get you started at 11 a.m. Eastern. They're going to have pregame shows, postgame shows, halftime shows. That first show leads into North Carolina hosting Campbell at noon. And then later in the day, they'll be back at 6.30 to get you set for Miami NC State. That game is at 8. After the game, stay right here on ACCN for a complete wrap-up with interviews with players and coaches. Away, Katie, away! Hi, Katie! North Carolina. Edge of the area for Darlene. Away, away, away! There is Cox. Rabimbus, and even with some deflections on the way in, still Breach makes a save. And this is why Anson Dorrance does make these subs, because now we are seeing the Pitt Panthers, if they don't get their clearances right, then North Carolina has one, two players behind the ball. Good balance, good shape behind it to be able to regain possession. And now they're starting to get more quality opportunities on goal. I asked Anson today if the plan was to cut down on the substitution patterns. We saw the Tar Heels do that in the postseason last year, that they didn't quite go to this big line change quite as often once they got in the NCAA tournament. Foul here. We'll get the Panthers the free kick. And he said, well, I hope not, because he really feels like the second unit helps them a lot. And now that we're in the postseason, we welcome back overtime, where he feels like all of those subs and that depth really helps his team should they get to that point in a match. Set pieces have been a soft spot defensively for the Tar Heels. The Panthers, first ball bounces down, now is cleared out. And a chance to break. Darlene, one of the fastest on the field. We'll take her time into the middle. Back out to Darlene. A little slip up. And now it's cleared out of bounds by Olivia Lee. Well, it's important intervention from Lee because Darlene can be such a difference maker coming off the bench in the middle of most of these halves and it has electric speed and it's the right decision to be able to break out play the square ball and then get it back to be able to break herself out the lead does well to come over reads the play keeps her feet moving there has been a shift the tar heels are on the attack since those subs came on right around the 15th minute shot from distance oh my <laughs> Uh, and got, uh, Della Rose says, oh my, as well, too. She puts her hand up. Wrong decision. I uh, went for gold. <laughs> but you can Damian, see the power man, is seemed there. a bit like, oh my, as well. Yeah. Sophomore Tessa Della Rose out of Grindstone, Pennsylvania. In her high school, didn't play soccer a senior year, didn't matter. Still is the all-time record holder. 108 goals in three years of her high school career. She was looking for one there. She does have one on the season, go along with a couple of assists. Dorbet, Dorbet. So an interesting note about our, our two coaches on the sideline tonight. You've heard me say that Randy Waldrum obviously was coaching Nigeria at the World Cup. Lori and I both called some of those matches this summer. And Anson Dorrance, of course, has some international coaching experience. Coached the U.S. at the very first 
World Cup for women back in 1991. And these two are the only two active coaches in the country to have also coached at a World Cup. Kind of an interesting tidbit with these two. And all the coaches always say, they're always stealing ideas and thoughts from their different areas that they're coached, the players that they're around. Sometimes you get the player too, like Abby Odin, who decided, hey, I want to come play for you some more at Pitt. Fury. That one through traffic, got a little out of control. And the crowd just urging this Tar Heel team on every time there's a chance to go. Darlene. Cuts it in, wants to go the other way. Lee, the freshman who's been so good since stepping into the starting lineup for the Panthers, intercepts. Mandy Mertz, transfer from Dayton, but in her fourth year with the Panthers. Tar Heels coming at you the other way, and Breach is gonna play that out with her feet. But I like that idea from North Carolina. It's a direct ball over the top that we're talking about, and it comes directly off of a turnover in the middle of the field. Fury had come back to the ball. She had two players around her, smart defensively from North Carolina, and then they tried to go quickly. But now this game is starting to open up, and that is going to benefit those fresh legs for North Carolina. So these moments are right here as we're seeing Caulfield. Can she connect her pass? Well done to find Mertz on this near side. Mertz has done such a good job at keeping that width. Now she goes across. Allen sniffing out the danger. And my only complaint for the Pitt Panthers right now in this first half, because it's been an extremely mature performance, picking their moments, when they can go quickly, have looked successful and dominant when they're keeping possession. But it's just about that ruthlessness, being a bit more clinical inside the 18-yard box, because they are creating their chances just can they finish them off because the longer you allow the Tar Heels to hang on, especially with the rotation that we've seen with the substitutions that they make, they will push the pace. And regardless if they're having trouble scoring goals, they will continue to commit numbers forward as we're going to see a few substitutions for, for both sides. I think I said Mia Oliaro came on before. She was not a part of that group of six. She comes on now, replaces Darlene. That's a little surprising to me, isn't it? Do you as, as effective as Darlene in this group has been since coming on? Yeah, I, I like Darlene. I think she offers a little bit of something different for North Carolina. She's always looking to, to go in combination, but she has the ability to go herself as well. And I mentioned moments ago how pacey she is. And, with that explosiveness, she can break out. And this feels like one of those games where she can really cause some problems with her movement, her ability to get on the ball and, and run at the back line. Maybe something there, though, the coaching staff did not like because she did get pulled off with a couple minutes to go. Lucia Wells also, you saw, came on. Give Samaya Fury a little bit of a break here before halftime for the Panthers. The one thing I've been so impressed with with the Pitt Panthers throughout this season. We are going to see just a loose touch there from Mertz. So that is an area that they'll want to be cleaning up as they go into postseason play. But there's a sophistication in terms of their buildup. They're always looking for their central players. They're confident to break the line immediately, get those players on the ball. And they're not afraid to play out of the back and look for that more progressive pass. And certainly has proven well for them shifting into the three-back formation. But it put under a little bit of pressure there, and now it's a North Carolina corner kick. Yeah, the first go, one of go. the match coming up now for North Carolina. Be ready. Couldn't say it better myself. Breach getting the defense ready to go. Never been best freshman out of Warren, New Jersey. Ready from the corner for North Carolina. Puts it across. It's in the gloves and out. And we'll try it from the other side. Well, this is why you want to earn set pieces, because look at the numbers around Breach. Makes it difficult for her to keep a hold of it, and they earn another one, North Carolina. Less than a minute to play. Delrose now on the far side. And eventually Breach able to catch it. Unencumbered. 
It's been a good first half. Nobody's been able to find an advantage yet, but this Pitt Panther team only proving they are up to the task on the road at the number three ranked team in the country. The numbers you see there are the seeds for our ACC championship. North Carolina, the four, Pitt finishing just below the Tar Heels in the regular season standings with the five seed. Perhaps one more chance in the half left for North Carolina. Not so, as it is put out of bounds by Ashton Gordon. And Lori, we will stay locked up at zero after our first 45. Yeah, and what a performance that was for the Pitt Panthers in this first half, coming out, feeling confident, dominating that midfield area that we said was going to be a key for this game, pick their moments when to go forward. And again, the only complaint that I would have is them not being ruthless enough, taking their opportunities, really putting North Carolina under a lot of pressure for the amount of chances they created. North Carolina, not really in the game the first 30 minutes or so, came alive the last 15. But I would imagine this game is going to start to open up in the second half with both teams getting some quality opportunities. It's going to be about taking taking their chances when they do get them. Well, we'll look forward to it. We also have plenty coming up for you here at the half. We are in the postseason so well. So the Pitt Panthers wearing the royal blue on the road in Chapel Hill, North Carolina in white. Ashley Cedro, our referee, saying let's go for the second half. First meeting of 2023 for these two teams. They did not play in the regular season. And the winner of this one earns the right to go to Cary, North Carolina and take on the number one team in the country, the top seed, the regular season champion, Florida State Seminoles. You time, you time. North Carolina shown some patience, looking for their moments to move the ball up the field. Up, up, up. Foul against the Tar Heels. And Katie Zielski, sophomore out of Somerville, South Carolina, to take the kick for the Panthers. Avery Patterson back out on the field for North Carolina tonight. Didn't play on Thursday. There's Sam Meza showing how talented she is on the ball. A couple of times that stop, that start, change of pace. Macy Bell. Talia Della Pruta will go back to Elgin on the back line. Patterson and Centaur, the two most consistent scorers for the Tar Heels this season. Nancy Dorn's looking for someone else to get in the act. He'd love for one of those two to score as well, but wants to see some more of those chances, all those other attacking options he has in white tonight. Six teams making the ACC championship. Top two, as we said, Florida State, Notre Dame, getting the two seed, the bye. Straight through to the semifinals. North Carolina turning it over, taking control and missing the opportunity. Oh, the best opportunity of the game for North Carolina. It all starts with their pressure. It's a, a little turnover right there. And Sinor does so well just immediately find Della Peruta and I felt like she had the window to unleash a shot right here after that first touch but opts to take another and then another and just sends that one wide and that was the opportunity and this is exactly what Anson Dorrance has been talking about is putting themselves in really good positions but then not taking those opportunities when they do get them. Tori Della Peruta just able to find the back of the net with any consistency as the season has gone along. Yes! Panthers gonna make something, but won't. But that's that's been 
part of the story of this season for North Carolina, for sure. Part of the reason why the Tar Heels have a program record. Eight draws, five of those coming in conference play. Four of them in their last five matches. Well, to that point, Jen, really outside of Patterson and Sintnor, those have been the two consistent goal scorers for North Carolina. Outside of that, it has been really players getting opportunities and just not finishing them. And it is one of the reasons why we've seen a bit of the, the formation changes from Anson Dorn's society is we're going to see a bit of a, a situation. Yeah, Katie Sielski went off. I don't know if that's something to do with... I'm not sure. The referee went over. I was trying to watch what she was doing. Sometimes you get taken off if there's blood on the jersey or something like that. But at the moment, we'll let you know if we find out more information. Zalski is off. Freshman Sage Stelzer came on in her place. Zalski, a pretty key component of that back line for the Panthers. Told she just took a knee. Zielski. So off for the moment and getting evaluated as this ball goes across. It's cleared out. And this is a time that North Carolina may try to pounce some inexperience there. Just the sixth appearance of the season for the freshman Stelzer. Fury. No one there to turn to. Everybody was back. Usually Mertz had been the one that was an outlet pass available when Fury was ready to turn. <laughs> Emmy Allen, one really big save. Two total in the first half, but one that surely is a highlight so far. No whistle on that exchange. And we see this a few times for both teams. Just the attackers working back, doing a little bit to be able to turn the ball over higher up and, and then be able to try to attack quickly. It's just about connecting that pass, playing the final pass correctly into the path of the runner or to their feet directly to make the most of those opportunities. You know, I've said this before, having seen Pitt a couple of times, that you just saw Sarah Schapansky, number five for the Panthers. If you look at her points overall in the season, 10 goals, nine assists, that is over all competitions. She is first amongst every player in the ACC. For goals, she's second. When she is involved in the match, this pit offense really seems to get clicking, but there are stretches where she just is not involved enough. Well, I think that is where the Pitt Panthers have to get better control of this game. We saw it in the first half, moving it side to side, but when it does become transitional, especially from attack to defense, this is when they can get stretched out. And, and that is an area that North Carolina should continue to look at because that's where they can be most successful. We see how good so far in this game when the Pitt Panthers are locked in defensively, structured, and the ball is moving side to side for them to defend. They'll take that all day because they're not going to get pulled out of their shape. It's just when it quickly goes from back to front for North Carolina that the Pitt Panthers can, can be undone. And you see, if you're Pitt and you're trying to hit North Carolina in transition, you better get that ball right because exactly. those three in the back cover ground so well. And you can make the same statement for North Carolina because we've seen those a few balls that they're trying to play into the, to the attacker's feet or the through balls have go, gone wanting as well. So it's credit to both of these teams defensively because they do commit numbers back. Their, their forwards track back to try to disrupt play as well. It's just that sophistication, once you do get a bit higher up the field, making the right decision, play it to feet, play it beyond whatever the opposition is giving you. And right now we're seeing both teams make the wrong decision fairly consistently, and that's why this game is starting to get open up and be back and forth with some turnovers. It's a little clunky to start the second half. It's still a word. I think Anthony Lawrence actually used one of the last few times we spoke with him. 
up, Gabe, up, up. Neither team really in rhythm to start the second half. Bell continuing all the way up. Nobody really impeding her cross off the mark in the end. Held on to the ball, got it wide, wants it back. What the idea. Yeah, I, that was a, a wonderful idea, try to bend that into the path of Della Peruta. This didn't quite come off, but that's the wide channels where you can open up space for those central runners to come into. Breach, sophomore in goal for Pitt this year. First year as the full-time starter. Appeared in seven matches last season. And perhaps doesn't get enough credit for the job she's done backstopping this Pitt defense all season long. Emmy Allen on the other end, a red shirt sophomore, such great experience. Started every match last year for North Carolina in their run to the national championship game. Meza in space in the middle. That could be troublesome for the Panthers. Out she goes to Patterson. Abby Odin had seen enough. Well, how good is Abby Odin for this Pitt Panther team? I mean, defensively, she covers a ton of ground, first of all to be able to get back defensively, make that play against Patterson. But we've also seen her with the best opportunities in the first half for Pitt. Getting on the end of it, a shot from distance, two opportunities with her head. And she is the one that really makes this team tick. And if she can get on the ball more, it's gonna be a really bright second half for Pitt, but also Meza. She's the one that sprung that attack. Can she take this team on her shoulders and really start to get on the ball more often for the Tar Heels? Meza is having the type of influence in the midfield that Abby Odin has been having so far for Pitt. That is good news for North Carolina. Just, I think we've seen that as, as much or enough this year. She certainly has the tools. So I think it's partially her teammates finding her the ball in certain areas, and that's a good step from Abby Odon to dispossess Meza. Yeah, winning the battle, winning the ball for her team. Fury and Mertz, and Mertz goes down. But imagine the Tar Heel fans holding their breath, but there was no whistle on that play, and it's a good time for me to tell you that if you were watching ACC soccer during the regular season, you had a chance to have plays like this had this been called a penalty kick that could have been reviewed. That was part of the experimental replay review rules that were in play for conference play in the ACC. We do not have those in the postseason. So perhaps we'll see referees at times a little more cautious to blow the whistle. I'm not 100% sure it's a penalty. We're just finishing our point, Jen about uh, Meza, I think it's partially her teammates finding her in good spots, which will pro primarily be beyond that midfield line for the Pitt Panthers, but then also her desire to really take over some of these games, because she has all the tools. She can play the final pass, she can shoot, she can get into the 18-yard box, get on the end of service, but she can also take on 1v1. So it's going to be important for her, especially in these stretches of postseason play, can she really take a hold of this team and, and push them forward? Because right now you do feel like that's what's missing for North Carolina, somebody that really is going to take the responsibility to start closing out some of these games, because they do dominate the majority of them. Here is Meza on the ball. 
drops it forward. Della Peruta and Sentner were both there in the same space. Well, Patterson had both hands raised. Now she gets the ball. You know you're really open if you've got both hands up in the air. Sentner gets herself that open. Where is that finishing touch? The final ball just not there for the Tar Heels. Amanda West. Missed last season with the ACL injury, played just six matches, so she was able to continue her career. One of the best to ever wear the pit jersey. And Mertz doing what she does, earning a corner kick for the Panthers. First of the second half, fourth of the match. Well, a smart play from the Panthers as well because they know they didn't have numbers in the central areas. Players are converging on Fury, so they opt to go wide and then go in line and earn this set piece. And now this is where they have to take advantage because they had a few good opportunities in the first half that put North Carolina under some pressure. The first, the service from Trevansky and then making sure you get a little separation from your runners. Not here. Nothing, come on. Look at all the bodies in the box right along the goal line. Can Emmy Allen own that area? Protect her goal. Here's the service from Shapansky. Hey, just wide of the post. Inches keeping Abby Oden and the Panthers off the scoreboard. Well, Abby Oden cannot believe her luck right now because second big time save from Emmy Allen. This time, again, gets herself set and then pushes off, and that is huge. She does have coverage on that near post from Elgin. Elgin, excuse me, but it's an excellent save to send it out for another corner and not able to find the back of the net from Abby Odin because what a header that was. Pitt asking for another corner. They're going to get it, but you're right. Abby Odin has been denied a couple of times by two really excellent saves from Allen. Well, that is the, the fourth header of this game for Abby Odin that she's had a chance inside the 18 yard box. Two big time saves from Emmy Allen and the others have gone wide, but now this is where the Pitt Panthers have to continue to put the pace on, pace pressure on, push the pace, be proactive to get on the end of it. Chapansky will try it again. Might have been bending out of bounds, but North Carolina gets ahead to it. Chapansky back on it, serves it in. Follow-up shot from Caulfield will bounce into the gloves of Allen. Ellie Caulfield, a junior for the Pitt Panthers out of Mars, Pennsylvania, played her high school soccer where she was a two-time Pennsylvania Gatorade Player of the Year for the Mars High School Fighting Planets, one of my favorite high school mascots of all time. Always got to give them a little love. <laughs> Lori, what was your high school mascot? Did you have a good one? High no, school we mascot for you? No, we were the Red Devils. Well, you are, that fits, that's fitting. <laughs> Rude on the broadcast. <laughs> Panthers attacking again. This will go out for another corner. Last thing that North Carolina wants to see. However, they have maybe more even building a little confidence in the way that they have defended these. Allen has made a couple of really good saves. Well, if there's any doubt, doubt in Emmy Allen, I mean, she has to be filled with confidence right now because those are two huge saves because they could have easily been in the back of the net for the Pitt Panthers. Both of those opportunities from Abby Odon. There's the ball and it does get a touch from Allen. And there have certainly have been moments that have gone the other way. Everybody, I'm sure, remembers the NCAA championship and how UCLA was able to get overtime from a corner kick for a state match this year. The Seminole scoring with seven seconds left off a corner kick. So there have been those memories as well. And this is flirting with disaster to just continue to keep giving up the corner kicks to the Panthers. Well, let's talk about the service because Shapansky's service has been excellent these last few. 
Another good ball. Yes, Allen forced to punch it away. It does stay in bounds, it looks like. And at least this time, the Tar Heels just have to contend with a throw. Four corner kicks in four minutes. Well, listen, it comes down to, to the service. And both of those balls, the last two for the Pit Panthers on these corner kicks have forced Emmy Allen to have to keep her feet moving through traffic and just get something on it to at least keep it out of the back of the net. And well done for them to be able to weather that bit of storm, the Tar Heels, because good service and some clear opportunities for the Panthers off yeah, of set pieces. Not over yet, Lori, says now there is a foul, so a set piece and a free kick coming up for the Panthers. But you're absolutely right, my goodness. And you could see the angle, some of our replays, the bend. Schapansky was putting on that ball, putting it perfectly where the defenders couldn't get up to head it. The goalkeeper had to make the play or that thing's going to bend right into the goal. Now she'll get an opportunity from the free kick. Ball put in play, and just like that, up and out. We will have a special final hour of ACC PM tomorrow at 6 Eastern with Cal Stanford SMU joining the conference next year. Mark Packer and Taylor Tannebaum will look at the ACC's new football scheduling model and the matchups for the next few seasons. Should be very educational for all of us, for sure. Everybody's anxious to see how that is all going to play out. Amanda West, and she write her name into this match a little bit more in its storyline. Eight goals, eight assists this season for Amanda West. Constantly attacking, creating, leads all ACC players with shots on goal, shots per game, excuse me in all matches this season. The crowd will tell you they think something was missed just there, but whistle was blown eventually. Caulfield not making any friends. Well, Caulfield, hard. no, yeah, and she knows exactly what she's doing. And it's smart play because Della Peruta was going to be off to the races with space in behind. But sometimes it's just important to, to draw those fouls, take it, knowing that you can just stop play and, and not allow the opposition to get a good look on goal. <laughs> Nothing you can do but smile when you have to play the villain, right? <laughs> Lori, I imagine you had to... You had to endure a few of those not-so-friendly fans sometimes. I bet you didn't make lots of friends from the opposing teams when you were out there running around with Virginia uh, Cavaliers. <laughs> Everybody loved you. <laughs> you were a Red Devil. <laughs> In high school. Cavalier. Yeah, that's yeah. college. All right. Shapansky. Too quick to cross. Her targets weren't quite in position yet. Coming right, coming right. Hurts backing her way up. Now she's ready to charge in. Away. And the ball wide of the goal. North Carolina bringing in the bench. Seven subs for the Tar Heels coming on, much as we saw in the first half. The difference is how long will they stay in the second half? You are allowed a re entry, so. Imagine you will see some of these players who are coming off now. You see Patterson, Meza, Colton, most of the attacking players, Moxley, all making their way to the bench for now. So we'll see how the second unit does. But I did feel like in the first half, Lori, this was where the match really started to turn in favor of the Tar Heels when these subs yeah, came in. I agree 100%. And we started to see a bit of the different energy, different ideas. And you and I even talked about just some big balls over the top, just to give a different look, put the back line for Pitt under some different types of pressure. And really didn't see that to start this second half either from the starting group. So can we see a resurgent from the substitution, substitutions that have just come on and showcase some of that energy that kind of brought them back to life 
in the first half. Abby Oden, one of the most instrumental players in this match thus far, just has been denied a couple of times by Emmy Allen. Ooh, she gives the quiet sign to the crowd. Not afraid. She's not making any friends either. I don't think she minds. Well, what was the one thing that Randy Waldrum talked to us about coming into this game? That the thing that he was most proud about with this team is as they continue to build this program is the belief that they can play against these teams. Now, I think the extra little layer to that is punishing the teams because we're seeing all of it. We're seeing the fun personalities. We're seeing smart tactical fouls on one end creating chances on another, but we're just not seeing the ball in the back of the net. And so that is the evolution of this program, the Pitt Panthers, is making teams pay because they do create chances and they do work as a team and it's difficult to play against. Yeah, good point. And most of the Pitt starters still out there right now with all the changes for North Carolina. Darlene and Fossey on the outside. Cox and Thomas up top. Sember, Rabimba, Della Rose all in in the midfield and back line in Della Rose's case. Remember Sage Stelzer, the freshman who came on earlier in this half for Katie Zalski, who started every match this season on the back line for the Panthers. And not haven't received any more information as to why she had to leave the match. Perry just couldn't hang on to it with two Tar Heels around her, but it's put right back at Caulfield's feet. Under 20 minutes to play in this match. Scoreless from Dorrance Field in Chapel Hill. Winner of this one moves on to Cary, North Carolina. Panthers looking for an opportunity. Allen denying them again. I think the offside flag came up anyway, but she has taken no chances. Well, if there's one game for Amy Allen to show up, well, it's exactly this one because she has been up for it all night long. Once again, just poor marking in the box. Fury, one of the main targets for the Pitt Panthers, wide open on that far post. So ultimately is offside, but in a dangerous area. And Emmy Allen had to be sure about it, needed to come off her line to not have any questions about whether or not Fury was offside. But alarm bells once again, because there's just too many opportunities for the Panthers inside the box to be able to find space to get into. What a touch from West. Smooth, she brings it down now, carrying it into the box, gets the shot off and denied again. Allen has been the player of the match for North Carolina so far. But that is the pressure. That is the pressure that Pitt Panthers have to continue to put on this back line for North Carolina. The onus, Amanda West brings it down perfectly from the wide areas, gets her head up, goes herself against Bell. Takes a little bit of deflection, holds up for Allen to be able to make the save, but continuing to go, continuing to get players on the ball, 1v1, then look to link up, mix up the variety in the attack. But right now is the time for the Pitt Panthers because once again in this second half, they're the ones that have the, had the better of the opportunities, continuing to put North Carolina under pressure. They just don't have anything to show for it. Good sign there to see Zielski coming back into the match. She returns to the back line for Pitt. Stells her job well done. Kept this North Carolina team at bay in Zalski's absence. Oliaro re-entered the match for North Carolina. Darlene once again going off. Here is West starting to find her footing. Needs some help defensively. North Carolina, they get it from the midfield. Pass too far and too close to Abby Oden. Well, completely getting completely overrun in the midfield in the North Carolina Tar Heels. Abby Odon, 
Caulfield when she steps in, Shapansky. I mean, those players are just creating angles, one twoing, and is chasing shadows right now for North Carolina. Mertz, the header, there's a goal the Panthers have been searching for. You said Pitt needs to punish North Carolina. Well, this time they do. Well, listen, this entire play starts from the turnover in the midfield. We talked about them overrunning in those central areas. They have overloads. They play it out wide. And this time, that final pass, the final cross is point on point right into the path of Caulfield. She got into a more advanced position. That's so difficult to de defend and just makes them play pay right back to the point that you want or where that ball came from, sends it right into the corner. And what a finish that is from Caulfield. All smiles now for Ellie Caulfield as she finishes off her fifth goal of the season and very quickly, a lot of those starters back in for North Carolina. And, and that is exactly how you want to punish teams. What a run that is from Caulfield, but it all starts with them being able to be patient, the service from the wide areas, and that is a pinpoint header right back where it came from, back to the near post, no chance for Emmy Allen, and it puts Pitt Panthers up away from home, 1-0. And you felt it coming, right, Jen? You just yep. felt the opportunities, the pressure, not much in the way of any sort of opportunities for North Carolina in this second half, despite bringing on the substitution. A couple things to think about. The postseason, I would think, is secure for both of these teams in terms of the NCAA, right? So obviously, the first goal is they want to keep fighting for an ACC championship. North Carolina knows that they're going to most likely host. You saw them as one of the teams in that top 16. Can Pitt get there, though, with a win like this? if they can hold on. Another shot, and Allen with the save. So there's a lot on the line beyond just that opportunity to advance to the semifinal, but to think about what it does for your standing on the national stage going forward. Sintnor is fouled, that'll set up the free kick. Ali Sintnor. Had the game time goal on Thursday night in the 62nd minute against Boston College. That match ending 1 1. It was the first time the Tar Heels had trailed at the half all season long. They came back to get the draw. Hey, this way, this way. Lady, face me. That way, more, more. Keep going. Keep going, keep going. Keep Kelly Breach setting up the wall. That way, that way, that way, that way. That way, that way. Stop. 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 Keep going. And Emily Moxley, ready for North Carolina. Serves it in, looking for the connection and not the finish the Tar Heels needed. Saturday, the ACC huddle crew has you covered all day long from Raleigh, North Carolina. They'll start at 11 a.m. Eastern with a show that will lead up to North Carolina hosting Campbell at noon. They'll pop up throughout the day with halftime pre and post game shows. And then at 6.30 p.m., they'll get you set for Miami NC State at 8 p.m. After that game, they'll have interviews, complete wrap up of the day. So be sure to stick around all day long on ACCN on Saturday. And about into the match, replacing Amanda West at the moment for Pitt. Panthers hanging on to this one nothing lead. 73rd minute goal from Ellie Caulfield. The first in this match. The difference so far, but North Carolina looking for an answer. Sent North with the left foot down to. Oh, we've seen Sintnor do this before throughout this season. She just needs a little window to be able to unleash a shot from distance. And I was about to make the point that right now, the Pitt Panthers have to make sure that they're touch tight, don't give anything away, because this is the response we're gonna see from North Carolina. And Sintnor, Patterson, they've been the ones to be at the heart of the attack for North Carolina. And what a strike that is from Sintnor. 
Her seventh of the season, yep. Yeah, very similar, Lori, to what she did on Thursday night, as I was just mentioning, when the Tar Heels were trailing on the road at Boston College, and she just ripped it from that left foot, put it in a spot no goalkeeper could save it. And this one, kind of the same thing. Nothing much Breach could do about it. And now she just needs a little window, and you could just see as soon as she won that ball, just one thing on her mind was to go to goal, and she just needs a little bit of space to open up, and she got all of that, and there's just no chance for Breach. But what a response, and sometimes that's what you need. We've seen Emmy Allen on one side keep their team, keep her team in this game, but then Sitnor going down just moments later after conceding the go-ahead goal to the Pitt Panthers, putting the team on her shoulders and getting one back. Such an important goal, obviously, for Sentinel in North Carolina. And how nice is it also when you feel like you can flip the script that's haunted you most of the season where North Carolina has had leads and then they have had to settle for game time goals that have come late. They've led in five of their draws this season. And in four of those, they conceded the final 15. Now the Tar Heels have come back. And this sets up another free kick. It needs to be careful. Well, this is a, a really good opportunity right now for the Pitt Panthers just to regroup, making sure that they don't lose their composure. They're sitting or once again, just putting herself in a position to draw the foul. You can just see the momentum. Panthers just step in, stepping in, Zalski to be exact. But a really good opportunity, I think. Potentially, unless you get enough whip on it, enough pace to get up and over the wall, could be a bit far to strike directly on breach so they can get runners into the box. The runners couldn't get there in time. Maybe a little too direct, may not enough air under the ball. Well, just going back to the to that point to finish it off, Jen, is for now for the Pitt Panthers, not accustomed to really being in these positions in terms of a knockout stages. So can they keep themselves composed, make sure that they stay tight as a unit, because one thing that we do know about North Carolina is they're gonna ride this energy now on their home field and, and really start to attack with numbers. So it's about staying patient, staying calm under the pressure for the Pitt Panthers. And listen, if you're North Carolina, keep going for it. Use that energy to your advantage. Abby Odin. Keeps possession for Pitt. Amanda West coming back into the match. All-time leading scorer. Trying to finish up her Pitt career, leaving this program better than she started it. It is back-to-back -back years of some pretty impressive performances for Pitt. Their first ACC championship appearance last year in the tournament, but they lost that match in penalty kicks to Notre Dame. And then in their first ever NCAA appearance in 2022, Made it all the way to the Sweet 16. On your lap. Kind of even better that sum now in 2023. Ellie Caulfield, the goal scorer for the Panthers in the 73rd minute, but three minutes later, North Carolina and Allie Sentinel answering back. the way the game goes sometimes. You go 72 minutes with no goals, and then each team finds one three minutes apart. Send us up for a fantastic finish. Final 10 minutes on the clock from Dorrance Field. Mertz crosses. Macy Bell comes in to win it. Colton. Over to Sintnor. Her seventh goal of the season, tying this match up in the 76. Meza. Left it a little short. Chapansky. Terrific service all night long from the corner. Finds Amanda West. Out of space out wide if she wants it. West takes the shot, tried for a little deception. 
and went just wide. Well, I don't think she can believe that she hit this one wide because you can see Bell just retreating, retreating. No one actually steps, and my goodness, that doesn't miss by much, just inches. Really has to be hitting the, the back of the net in that situation because no one's stepping, everyone's dropping for North Carolina. Can't get the recovery runs to help out the back line. Well, look at that shot differential hit. 17 to seven. But North Carolina starting to find their way. This is a chance. Della Peruta over the crossbar. Well, shirt in her mouth because she knows it. What an opportunity this is. Just right off the back of that missed chance from West on the other end. How quickly they get into the attack. This really is where North Carolina is at their best. Just a few passes, get players into the attack. Right decision to find Del Peruta inside the 18-yard box. But just like West on one end, have to be hitting the target on the other to at least force a save from Breach. That one's going over the crossbar all night long. Another opportunity, one of the best one outside of the, the sit nor goal for North Carolina. And remember, now that we are into the postseason, there was a rule change that got rid of overtime in the regular season in college soccer. That started last year, but we will have it coming if we stay tied at the end of regulation. Two 10-minute overtime periods to be followed by everyone's favorite, really, the penalty kick shootout. But let's see what these final seven minutes and change have in store. Emily Moxley, grad student, started her career at UNC Wilmington. Coming back this year for North Carolina. Fourth year with the Tar Heels. Fury's been quiet this half, it feels like. Tessa Del Rose coming back in for North Carolina. And those are the numbers I was talking about when the Tar Heels have led, and then they've had to settle for a draw and look at the goals allowed late. That will certainly add to the gray hair if you're a head coach. <laughs> well, I think there's a, a couple parts to, to that stat is for the Pitt Panthers to continue to create their opportunities because they are getting them. As we just saw moments ago with West just pulling her shot wide of the goal. So continue to go, get Fury in the mix as well. Players running off of her. But then also for North Carolina, this is when they excel as well. Knowing that there's potential for them to be able to get into overtime Utilize their subs, utilize the fresh legs. I saw the one big ball over the top that led to that Della Peruta opportunity. Feels like there, there's more to come in this game, Jen. <laughs> that it does. Landy Mertz. Thought she might have found it right there, Lori. Didn't quite have the angle right. North Carolina unbeaten in the regular season this year. Also unbeaten at home over the last 17 matches, 14-0 and three in that stretch. Since the construction, renaming of Dorrance Field, I should say in 2019, the Tar Heels 43-4 and six at home, outscoring their opponents by a pretty impressive margin. Handball, Panthers will take it over. Under five minutes to play now in regulation of this first round ACC championship matchup, 4-5 matchup between the fourth seeded Tar Heels and the fifth seeded Panthers. Long ball into the box, one first by North Carolina. Shapansky. Looks for options over the shoulder. Winds up going back. That touch gives it up to North Carolina, but there's coverage there for Pitt. 
Del Peruta ruining that missed chance perhaps from a few moments ago. Shapansky, the always willing. Landy Burks waiting in the wings. Burks goes at herself and she's gonna get one of those right if she keeps getting the opportunity to get them off. Uh, I think from our angle, we keep thinking that's going to be in the goal. Yes. <laughs> but she's doing such a good job initially staying out wide, and that's what's opening up the space for her to be able to pick up the ball to her feet and then run at that back line for North Carolina. Really haven't had an answer. It's just that final pass letting them down because they do have runners. West, Fury, that can get on the end of the service. She can get that right in these last few minutes. And either one or two things needs to happen. Either she needs to decide she's just taking it for herself and redirect it a little bit more toward the goal, or maybe she needs to wait a little bit, let those runners get in position. Minas, one of the captains for this pit team, wins it, gets it to another captain, West Fury. It's put behind Chapansky. Three minutes to go. North Carolina team that has tied more games than in their entire program history, tied at the moment. But they had to come back to earn that tie. Goals three minutes apart. Abby Oden gives it away to Meza. Caulfield. Yeah, the first touch was necessary. The second touch was a foul. And North Carolina will have a free kick just outside. Well, area. you want one of, yeah, and you want one of your defensive midfielders to be aggressive or if she's coming off that back line. And just prior to that attempt and that foul, she made such an important sliding tackle. But this one just unnecessary. Keep your feet moving. I know you're tired. But now this sets up a better opportunity and really let North Carolina off the hook because you had numbers going forward if you could just regain the possession. Couple options here. Does North Carolina go right to goal? Or they look for some of those targets like a Macy Bell in the box. Patterson there as well. Ball going toward the goal. It does skim the top of the net. Could be some what might have been hanging around for the Pitt Panthers in this one, feeling like they could have, should have put away some of their earlier opportunities. They've had the better opportunities, more of them in this match anyway. Outshot North Carolina 17 to 9. And doing that in Chapel Hill. Patterson looking across the box, but out of bounds it goes. She is all banged up. Missed the last match for North Carolina. Was able to get a little more rest. It's a tough turnaround always going that Thursday, Sunday. And then the ACC semifinals looming this coming Thursday. And Cary, North Carolina, which of these two teams will get there to take on the regular season champion, Florida State Seminoles, Notre Dame, Clemson. The other semifinal matchup after the Clemson Tigers dispersed of Wake Forest earlier tonight, one nothing the scoreline in that match. And Lori Lindsay, it looks like 90 minutes is not going to be enough for this one. So we will stay tied at one for now. Go ahead, get a snack, take a little break, and then come right back. We'll get you set for overtime. Rematch of the regular season finale between those two that we called on Thursday with Notre Dame winning it 2 nothing. So since it's been a while, you only get this in the postseason. Now here are your overtime rules. Two 10-minute periods on the way. It is not golden goal, so we will play 20 minutes no matter what. If we're still tied after that, that's when we go to penalty kicks. So in case you're joining us very late, North Carolina at home wearing the white and Pitt on the road wearing the blue. 
1-1 our score. The Panthers striking the 73rd minute. North Carolina answering three minutes later. And here we are in overtime. Tar Heels, the most successful team this tournament has ever seen. But to be fair, they are the most successful team collegiate women's soccer has ever seen. <laughs> Going for that 23rd NCAA championship this year, 23 and 23. That's the motto. They also have 22 ACC championships. Well, and that's what the Pitt Panthers are going up against right now is experience, understanding of what it means to close out these types of games. So it goes back to the previous oh point goodness. we made after they conceded that tying goal is can they stay calm? Can they stay composed? Play through the pressure of North Carolina that you know is going to come fast and furious and continue to play their game and play to their strengths, which is getting fury on the ball in those central areas. Mert serving balls into the box. Yeah, I think they called a little bit of a push there on Tamaya Fury. Elgin with the slip to the ground. Saw Tessa Delarose getting the start in this overtime period, number 34 for North Carolina. Macy Bell. Over to Moxley. There's Delarose. She can step into the midfield or the back line. Looks like she's in the midfield now for North Carolina. Over to Emily Colton. Mertz, who's been up and down the sideline, a chance to break through, down Peruta, denied by Ellie Breach. Not sure if the flag came up anyway, but what a chance. Well, and how many important saves have we seen on the other end from Emmy Allen? Well, this time it's up to Ellie Breach. She comes out and makes herself big because look at this ball from Colton into the path who just snuck in Del Peruta in behind the back line. Cut ball washing, Del Peruta put herself in a great position. But this has been a knock on her all season. Putting herself in those positions and not finishing them off, Breach comes up big. And this will be another set piece for North Carolina. Away, away, away! I'm behind you. Off the Step up, step up. A little too much, but there's an opportunity to serve it back. Still make something of it. Bell goes up in the air, gets the header. And now Pitt can exhale. But yeah, tough night. Couple really good looks. Probably the best of the match for Tori Della Peruta. And the thing is, she puts herself in such good positions. I mean, that was an excellent run just to read where Colton had been able to open herself up. Knew that she had seen the space. No one was marking her, kept herself on side. Looked like Della Rose maybe took the ball to the face and that's why the referee blowing the whistle here just to check on her a ball or a high boot something colliding with her nose it looks like north carolina has advanced out of the quarterfinals the last six times the tar heels have played in this round remember you can get a bye past the quarterfinals with the current format format to go right to the semis Here's that last play. That was a high boot. So at the moment, Della Rose will come off. Talia Della Peruta will come on in her place. Older sister of Tori, who just had that last opportunity for the Tar Heels. Del Peruta. Oh, oh. one touch. She is so dangerous. Yeah, she certainly is. And I, I like the one touch opportunity. It's just the, the ball over the top. It gets hung up a little bit off of a, a Caulfield deflection. 
but Zintnor always looking to get into a space that's dangerous. Cheat just a little bit when she can. That one hangs up nicely, just pulls it wide. North Carolina on the attack again. This time it's Patterson. Will she make her mark on the match? A save from Breach. And it just feels like Pitt is having to play a lot of defense. They look yep. the more tired team at the moment. Well, Jen, it goes right back to the point that Anson Dorrance has made. This is why they went overtime, because this is when they excel, and then they start to make better decisions. Whoa, whoa. Because they feel, it feels as if they're more calm in these situations. Pushing the pace at a tempo that feels uncomfortable for the opposition, and, and then they make the right pass. And on that last attempt, instead of forcing it down the central areas, Patterson kept herself wide, opened up a little bit of space. This is what they're built for. North Carolina, Del Bruja, another chance! Oh! What in the world? She and Abby Odin are just snake bit in this match. Well, you, you just feel for Della Peruta at this point in time because, again, she puts herself in a great position to open up the space to be able to cut back. And you saw exactly what she's trying to do, just whip it into that far corner. But the commitment on Pitt's side to get numbers back, Caulfield in particular, to clear it out of danger. And we'll see what they can make of, of this opportunity now as Mertz is, is driving towards that back line. Mertz will just continue diagonally across the field. Panthers look a little out of sorts. Look Amanda West, too, by the way, helping out her goalkeeper. I think she helped keep that ball out of the back of the net. Oh, it was Amanda West. I was thinking it was Caulfield that had tracked that. Thank you. Yeah, I had to look twice myself. Is that, yeah, that's one of your top attacking players all the way back and <laughs> defending. Backing up the goalkeeper. There is West. Leapfrogging one defender, but ran right into another. And Talia Della Peruta. I don't think there's any question. North Carolina is the deeper team. They're the team that has the bench they go to more often. More players have come off the bench tonight. That is a benefit both in overtime and in a tournament setting where you have to play multiple matches. Well, you counteract that then by keeping possession when you can and slowing the game down, waiting for the runs to develop. Great positioning there from Fury to draw the foul from King. Just holds up the play really nicely, and this is the opportunity for them to catch their breath, but we've seen how dangerous they've been on set pieces throughout this game. So really important positioning from Fury to draw this foul. For these longer set pieces, you will see Ashton Gordon, the fifth-year defender, transfer from Arkansas, come up and take for the Panthers. Chapansky, the flick from Fury. Sendor. Defense on her heels. Sally Sendor, one more to beat. And it is blocked. How about that play from the freshman Olivia Lee? Well, coming into this game, one of the things we said if you're going to play a three back against North Carolina, that back unit has to be connected. They have to be communicating. One player gets beat, but then Lee has the coverage. What? Here comes Murphy. Yeah! Yeah! going North Carolina's way, and yet Pitt does this. Well, so much of the talk about the attack is from Chapansky, West, Fury, but Merckx has been excellent all game long. Great recognition to understand where the space is. She gets there first, a direct ball over the top, and then the commitment from West to be her defender, beat Bell to the ball, it looks like, and then just make North Carolina play. Pay. It was actually Moxley trying to check check back. 
And then Wes just getting all she can on it, gets it past Emily Allen, and what a goal that is to put the away team up two to one. Amanda West helps make a save on her own goal line and then comes down with just over a minute remaining in the first overtime and gets the lead. Mertz and Shabansky both credited with the assist. But remember, North Carolina answered back with Pitt scored the first time three minutes later. And we still have another entire 10 minute overtime period to go. And, and there was question, Jen, on how close Mertz was on that play. Was she offside? But regardless, no offside call and just really good recognition that there was a high line. So play quickly and to play Mertz into space, but the commitment to get runners into the box. What a header that was from Wes to beat her defender and get on the end of that service from Mertz. Panthers with the advantage, though North Carolina will certainly feel they won every other aspect of this first overtime period. So everyone will have to get set now. As well, and it goes back to our point of Pitt Panthers holding on, being disciplined, Talked about their belief, knowing that they could play any team in the country. Now is an opportunity for them to show that defensively, to hold on to this lead. And then North Carolina applying the pressure as much as they can here at home, getting numbers going forward to try to get one back. Sent North to Meza. Final 10 minutes on the clock of this one. It took two overtimes, maybe more. Olivia Thomas just coming back from injury. The freshman for the Tar Heels will be limited in minutes, but obviously these are perhaps the most important of the season to this point. Freshman, one of the fastest players on this North Carolina team. And there's quite a bit of speed to be had all up and down the Tar Heel roster. Step over from Isabel Cox, one of the veterans who comes off the bench Contain, for North Carolina. Settle, settle. One appearance away from the all-time record for the Tar Heels. This is 106 for Cox in her career. Bell King and Elgin cross the back line for North Carolina. Patterson. Loves to drive at defenders. Abby Odin. And you can hear Jen on the field. The Pitt Panthers saying, move your feet, settle, settle. And, and those are keys because what North Carolina does so well is make you feel uncomfortable. Their pressure forces you into positions that you don't want to be in and, and forces you to make decisions quicker than you really want to. So can you stay calm under that pressure, break the first line as North Carolina is gonna flood players forward and then find the open player to be able to build out of that. And then in these moments, step up your line because you don't wanna just be sitting back against this North Carolina team because they're gonna, just gonna push you deeper and deeper and then look for shots from distance. So gaining ground in these moments is crucial. Del Rose back out there. Left in the first overtime period. Boot hit her in the face. That goes out off of Thomas. Some anxious Tar Heels in attendance at Dorrance Field, perhaps on the field, definitely in the stands. Watching this one play out, North Carolina has not lost all season long. Wow, you could hear that one ding off of the woodwork. 
You said it, Lori. Landy Mertz has been excellent tonight. She certainly has. But look at the positioning. Once again, they always have an outlet on that right-hand side because she's getting to the touch line, making herself available, and then it stretches out the back line for North Carolina horizontally. And that's when the gaps open up because she gets herself into 1v1 situations or there's a player to bounce the ball off of and create the one-twos. It's caused a lot of problems defensively for North Carolina. They really haven't had an answer for it. Both goals came from her assists in those wide areas. Career by nine assists this season for Mertz, but the Tar Heels cheering now because they're getting an opportunity with the corner kick. This has been few and far between for North Carolina tonight, just the fourth of the match for the Tar Heels. Sentner ready from the corner. All the runners in motion. Toward the back post, punched away by Brees, but not far. And then, wow, that is a lucky bounce. A little help from her defense. First punch didn't go exactly the way Breach wanted. Well, a lot of credit to both goalkeepers tonight because they've been commanding through traffic inside their six-yard box. Both goalkeepers coming off their line, being aggressive, making themselves big to come up with those plays. This is the first a few opportunities that we've seen from North Carolina, but the Pitt Panthers doing a good job of committing numbers back behind the ball as well. Four saves in the match for Breach. Six for Emmy Allen on the other side. Tar Heels fighting, trying to find that equalizer. Meza. Patterson should have a chance to do what she wants here. Gets the cross at that six yard line. Meza couldn't line it up. Samaya so Fury really having a breakout season this year in her second year with the Panthers after transferring from Oklahoma State. 10 goals, three assists on the season. Five of those 10 goals coming in ACC play. Incredibly smart from Fury, just holding up the ball, slowing things down, and she could have just kept it there instead, gives it back. Up until that point in time, incredibly smart, just slowing things down. Looking to combine with West. Senor had Thomas. That the freshman couldn't get her foot to the ball. Time taken away on the Tar Heels. Chloe Minas, one of the captains, a senior for this pit team out of Montreal, Quebec, coming back into the match. And Abby Odin getting a little bit of a break. The freshman from Nigeria getting some heavy legs here as this one has gone late into the night in Chapel Hill. West, her goal at the moment, 48th of her illustrious career. No pit player has had more standing as the game winner if this score holds. The play continuing on here. Lee will try to get back to her feet. North Carolina calling for a handball. This occurring outside the area. Let's see. No, that is, a, that is a tough call because where are you going to put your arms if you're the defender for the Pitt Panthers at that point in time as you're lunging? Tucked into her body, yes. Is a hit Sentinor ball. will take it herself, puts it right off the feet of Wes. Sentinor trying again, still there for North Carolina. Good touch from Fury. Under three minutes to play. West, that's asking a lot of Shapansky. 
can't quite catch up. team's been impressive tonight, haven't they, Lori? Yeah, they really have. And, and they've showed some maturities in, in ways for a young team, as Randy Waldron would call his, his team, a, a team that's still very much in a building phase, but with a real belief that they can beat any team. And there's been some maturity in the way that they've seen this game through. At times, slowing it down, showing their strengths and being able to be a, a possession-based team, but also in quick transition that's how they got the go-ahead goal from Mertz into West quickly one ball over the top made North Carolina play, pay and now we're seeing them slow down the game as much as possible and drive North Carolina back defensively as much as possible Patterson just could not keep that ball in play it bounces out of bounds Pitt will get the throw Panthers looking for their first conference tournament win in program history. They were 0-5 in the Big East. Technically, it was a draw last year in their first ever ACC postseason game. Wound up losing in penalty kicks to Notre Dame. Schapansky playing some keep away in the corner. 125 on the clock. And Landy Mertz has been there all night long with whatever this pit team has needed. They are in the corner and they'll take their time as they put it in play. 107 to go. North Carolina with a chance to break out though. Under a minute to play. Macy Bell and the Tar Heels needing a goal to keep this match going. Get it to penalty kicks. Maddie Dallin just came off the bench for North Carolina. Blues and Oz from the crowd as it bounces out of bounds. It'll stay with North Carolina here. Corner kick coming for the Tar Heels. They have conceded last second goals from corners. Can they score one here? Find the equalizer, a team that has not lost this season. 16 seconds left, there's the ball, and it does not go in play. North Carolina fighting till the end, but tonight the Pitt Panthers get to celebrate in Chapel Hill. They are moving on to the semifinals after picking up their first ever win 